morning children today we are going to see our first chapter rational numbers we are familiar with numbers because in our daily classes we have studied about many types of numbers also in our day to day life we are using numbers to calculate some object to calculate time for everything we are using numbers here we are first going to recall about some type of numbers before seeing rational numbers we are going to recall some types of numbers natural number whole numbers and integer first natural numbers what are natural numbers you know that natural numbers starts from 1 2 3 and it will be going up three months four five six seven ten up to the just i'm taking the last positive number as n so the collection of all positive numbers are called natural numbers next whole number whole number starts from 0 1 
Ashanabad, Kolhapur, Uti Chars belongs to rational numbers. Okay. So, especially in this chapter, we are going to learn about the rational numbers. So, next we are going to see about the properties of rational numbers. Okay. So, on properties of rational numbers, we are going to discuss about closure property, commutative property, and associative property. Whether these properties holds for rational number or not. Now, we are going to see the properties of rational numbers. We are going to see the properties, closure property, commutative property, and associative property. First, we are going to discuss about the closure property for whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. First, what is closure property? Well, closure property, if you are adding two whole numbers, if the result is also a whole number, then we can say that the property is satisfied. Likewise, if we are subtracting two whole numbers, if the result is also a whole number, then we can say that the subtraction is satisfied. So, whatever the operation, if you are substituting the whole number, the result is in the form of whole number means we can say that the property is satisfied. Otherwise, the property is not satisfied. So, we are going to check the closure property for whole number. Under the operation, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. First, let us check for addition with some example. Listen, here I am taking example 3 plus 0. 3 is also a whole number and 0 is also a whole number. What is the value of 3 plus 0? The result is 3. 3 is a whole number. Likewise, another example 2 plus 4. 2 and 4 are whole numbers. The result is 6. 6 is also a whole number. So, just I am choosing Randomly two examples, for the two examples, if you are substituting the whole number, the result is also a whole number. So here, the whole number is closed under addition, because addition is satisfied. So we can say that the whole number is satisfied under addition. It is closed under addition. Next, for subtraction, for subtraction, for the subtraction, I am choosing again two examples. First, 5 minus 7. 5 is also a whole number, 7 is also a whole number. If you are subtracting this two number, what is the result? 5 minus 7 is minus 2. We have to put the greater number sign. Here minus 7, so we are putting minus 2. Listen to the next example I am using. 7 minus 5. What is the result? 2. Look at this example. Here I am substituting whole number only, but I am getting the result minus 2. Minus 2 is not a whole number. I am choosing another example. I am substituting two whole numbers one day. I am subtracting the two whole numbers and I am getting the result as two. It is a whole number. If I am checking two random examples, one I am getting as whole number, other is not a whole number. So here the condition is not satisfied. If you are choosing randomly any number in the whole number, it should satisfy the condition. But here one example is satisfying the condition, another example is not satisfying the condition. So we can say that the whole number is not closed under subtraction. The whole number is not closed under subtraction. Now, we are going to check for the next operation, multiplication. Again, we are choosing the two whole numbers. Okay, 5 is a whole number, 3 is a whole number. What is the result of 5 and 3? 5 into 3, 5 is a 15. And again, another example, 3 into 0. 0 is a whole number, 3 is also a whole number. What is the value of 3 into 0? 0. So check. 15 is a whole number. Yes. 15 is a whole number. 0. 0 is also a whole number. So for two random examples, we are getting the result as a whole number. So we can say that the whole number is closed under multiplication. Next, we are going to check for the operation division. So listen, we are choosing two whole numbers, 2 and 4. If you are dividing 2 by 4, so what is the result for 2 divided by 4? 1 by 2. Another example, 4 divided by 2. Just I rearrange it, but it's an example result. 4 divided by 2. 4 by 2. What is the result? 2. See here, the first result I am getting 1 by 2. Whether 1 by 2 is a whole number? No, it is in the form of fraction, so it is not a whole number. But for the second example, I am getting a whole number only. If I choose any two rank, examples randomly, one is satisfied, other one is not satisfied. So we can say that the whole number 
is not closed under division. So now finally the whole numbers are closed under addition and multiplication but the whole numbers are not closed under subtraction and division. Okay. So next we are going to check the closure property holds for integers or not based on this four operations. Now we are going to see closure property for integers. And we are going to check whether closure property is satisfied for integers under addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. First let us check for addition. Here we are going to add two integers. Minus 3 is also an integer. 5 is also an integer. If you are adding this 2 integer, the result is 2. 2 is an integer. Second example, minus 3 plus minus 2. Minus 3 is also an integer. Minus 2 is also an integer. If you are adding this 2 number, the result is minus 5. It is also an integer. So, in this 2 example, if you are substituting the integer, the result is also an integer. So, we can say that integers are closed under addition. Next, subtraction. Here, I am choosing 7 minus 5. 7 is also an integer. 5 is also an integer. 7 minus 5. What is the result? 2. And next example, 3 minus 2. 3 minus 2, the result is 1. Again, the results are integer form only. So, we can say that integers are closed under subtraction. Now, let us check for multiplication. We are multiplying the two integers 5 and minus 2. What is the value of 5 into minus 2? Minus 10. Minus 10 is an integer. There is this an integer. Minus 3 into 5. Minus 3 into 5 is minus 15. Again, it is an integer. So, in this two random example, we are getting, if you are substituting the integer, again the result is also in the form of integer. So, we can say that integers are closed under multiplication. Now, let us check for division. See, if you are writing an integer 2 by 4, 2 divided by 4, what is the result? 1 by 2. Whether 1 by 2 is an integer? No, it is in the form of fraction. So, it is a rational number, it is not an integer. Look at the second example 8 divided by 6. So, the result will be 4 by 3. Because if you cancel this, what is the 8 and 3 is a 6. So, 4 by 3 here, we are, here also we are getting a fraction number, it is not an integer. So, what is the result? The integers are not closed under division. Okay, so here clearly the integers are closed under addition, subtraction and multiplication but not closed under division. Next we are going to check whether the closure property holds for rational number or not. Now we are going to see whether the closure property holds for rational number under addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Here if you are substituting the rational number in addition, the result should be also in the rational number. Then we can say that the rational number is closed under addition. Let us check with few examples. Here, 5 by 3 is a rational number and 2 by 3 is a rational number. If you are adding this two number, the result is 7 by 3. 7 by 3 is in the form of fraction, so it is a rational number. Another example, 7 by 2 plus 4 by 3. First of all, the denominators, the denominators are different. So, if the denominators are same, you can directly add the numerator and put the same denominator. If the denominators are different, you have to take the LCM for the denominator and then only you have to add the fractions. So, the LCM for 2 and 3 is 6 and 7 3 is 21 and 4 2 is 8. So, the result is 29 by 6. Whether 29 by 6 is a rational number, yes, it is a rational number. So, if we check for two examples randomly, we are getting the result as rational number only. So, we can say that the rational numbers are closed under addition. Next, check for subtraction. Here, 5 by 3 minus 2 by 3. 5 by 3 is a rational number. 
2 by 3 is a rational number. If you are subtracting this two numbers, what is the result? 5 minus 2. 3 by 3. So if we cancel it, cancel it will be 1 by 1. We can write it as 1. It is also a rational number. Now let us check for the other example. 2 by 3 minus 4 by 3. The result is minus 2 by 3. Minus 2 by 3 is also a rational number because rational number may be additive or positive. So in this two example, both the examples we are getting the results are rational number only. So we can say that the rational numbers are closed under subtraction. Now let us check for multiplication. We are choosing two rational numbers. 5 by 3 into minus 2 by 3. If you are multiplying these two rational numbers, what is the result? Minus 10 by 9. We have to multiply the numerator with numerator and denominator with the denominator. So 5 plus are minus 10 and 3 3 is a 9. But the minus 10 by 9 is a ratio number. Yes, it is a ratio number. Now, minus into minus is a plus. So, 5 into minus 5. And the denominator is 6 is a 36. That is 5 into 36 is a ratio number. Yes, it is a ratio number. So, we can say that the ratio numbers are closed under multiplication. Next, we are going to see about the division. So, here we are choosing two ratio numbers. See here, 5 by 3 is divided by 2 by 5. Just take the symbol as multiplication and take the reciprocal of the second number. Okay, so 5 by 2. What is the result? 5 by 5 are 25 by 3 2 is 6. 5 by 7 25 by 3 2 is 6. Again, we are getting a rational number only. But in division, we are having a specific example. Listen, if, a, if I am choosing any rational number, let it be A. Okay? Let it be A. If I am taking any rational number, let it be A. If A is divided by 0, we know that 0 is also a rational number. If A is divided by 0, what is the answer? The answer is undefined. The answer is undefined. So, clear, it is clear that if any number divided by 0, the answer is undefined. Here we are getting undefined. So, for one example, we are getting ratio number 1. But if you are choosing a ratio number 0, the answer is undefined. So, finally we can say that the ratio number is not satisfying the division property for quotient. Okay. So, see here. The ratio number satisfies the addition, subtraction and multiplication under closure but it is not satisfying the division. Okay, next we are going to see the next property, commutative property. Now we are going to see the second property, commutative property. We are going to check whether the commutative property goes to a whole numbers under the operation, addition, subtraction and multiplication and division. First, how to check the commutative property? If you are taking any two numbers, for example, I am taking A and B, let it be a number, okay? So, for addition, if the value of A plus B, what the result of A plus B should be equal to the result of B plus K. Likewise, for other operation also, it should satisfy. A minus B should be equal to B minus K. A into B should be equal to B into A. And A divided by B should be equal to B divided by K. If this comes an equal result, then we can say that the commutative property is satisfied. So now we are going to check whether the commutative property holds for whole numbers. First, we are going to check under addition. Here, 5 is a whole number and 2 is a whole number. So 5 plus 2, what is the value? 7. Just I am rearranging the values. 2 plus 5, what is the result? 7. So look at that, if it is in the form of A plus B, the value is 7 and B plus A, the value is 7. So we are getting the equal result. Yes, we are getting the equal result. So we can say that the whole number satisfies the commutative property under addition. Next, let us check for subtraction. Let us check two whole numbers. 5 minus 2. 5 is a whole number, 
3 is a whole number. Subtract 5 minus 2. What is the result? 3. Now, rearrange the values and subtract the value. 2 minus 5. What is the value? 2 minus 5. Minus 3. Because 2 minus 5, the greater number is minus, so it is minus 3. So here, in the A plus B form, we are getting 3. In the B minus A form, we are getting minus 3. So, listen, in the first, we are getting 3. In the second, we are getting minus 3. The numbers are not equal. The results are not equal. So, not equal. So, what we can say? The competitive property does not hold for whole number and the subtraction. Next, check for multiplication. We are choosing two whole numbers. 5 plus 1, 10. Just replace the value. 2 fives are 10. Whether the results are equal? Yes. Both the results we are getting 10, they are equal. So, we can say that the commutative property holds for whole number under multiplication. Next, let us check for division. Plus 2 by 3. This is in the form of A plus B. 
What is the result? 7 by 3. I am replacing in the form of D plus A. So 2 by 3 plus 5 by 3. What is the result? 7 by 3. Whether the results are equal in both the form? Yes, they are equal. So we can say that the rational number satisfies the commutative property and the addition. Next, we are going to subtract it. 5 by 3 minus 2 by 3. We are subtracting two rational numbers. So here, the result is 5 minus 2, 3. And the denominators are same, so 3. So what is the value of 3 by 3? This 1. We can write it as 1 by 1 or 1. Next, we are replacing 2 by 3 minus 5 by 3. So 2 minus 5. The value is minus 3. The denominator is same, so 3. What is the result of minus 3 by 3? Minus 1. Here, in the first step, in the form of A minus B, we are getting the result 1. If you are replacing in the form of B minus A, we are getting the result minus 1. Whether the results are equal? No, they are not equal. So, the commutative property is not satisfied for rational number under subtraction. Now, let us check for multiplication. So, 5 by 3 into minus 4 by 7. Okay. So, 5 into minus 4, minus 20. 7 is are 21. Which is the rational number? Yes. Now, listen. I think we are replacing in the form of, it is in the form of A into B. Now, I am changing in the form of B into A. Multiply that. Minus 4 into 5. Again, it is minus 20. 7 is are 21. So, listen in the both the cases. Whether the results are equal? Yes, the results are equal. So, the commutative property satisfied on the multiplication here. Next, let us check for division. We are going to divide two rational numbers. Okay. Divide two rational numbers. For example, 4 by 3 divided by 5 by 7. Okay. So, 4 by 3 divided by 5 by 7 already we saw an example based on this. Just replace the symbol by multiplication and take the reciprocal of the second number. So, 7 by 5. What is the result? 7 4s are 28 and 3 5s are 15. Just replace the values 5 by 7 divided by 4 by 3. So, 5 by 7 into 3 by 4. What is the result? 5 3s are 15 by 7 4s are 28. Whether the two results are same, they are not same. So, the commutative property for division is here not satisfied. So, for the ratio number, the commutative property is satisfied under addition and multiplication, but it is not satisfied under subtraction and division. Now, we are going to see some examples how to solve the rational numbers based on the operations addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. Okay. Now we are going to see some basic problems on rational numbers. If we solve this problem, we are able to easily understand the next property, associative property and the excess problem also. Now, listen, we are going to do the problem based on addition. 2 by 5 plus 7 by 5. First in the fraction format, check the denominator. If the denominators are same, we can add the numerators directly and put the same denominator. Okay, so if the denominators are same, so we can put the same denominator, 7 plus 2. What is the value? 9. See the second example. Here, the denominators are different. If the denominators are different, you first check the LCM for the denominators. What is the LCM for 4 and 5? The LCM is 20. Then, you have to multiply the number with the numerator and add the numerator. So, 5 3 is 15 plus 28. So, 5 into 3 15 and 7 into 4 28. What is the value? 43 by 20. So, look here, we are having different types of here based on addition. For first one, the denominator is the same. The denominator is the same, we can directly add the numerator. If the denominator is different, First, we must take the LCM for the denominators and then add the numbers. Okay, next, we are going to do the subtraction. Here, again, we will check the denominator first. The denominators are same. So, you can directly subtract the numerator. So, what is 4 minus 2? Two? 2 by same denominator, 3. Come to the next example. Here also, we are going to subtract the two rational numbers. See, here the denominators are different. 
rational numbers. So you have to take the LCM for these two numbers. What is the LCM for 2 and 5? The LCM was 10. Make the same procedure what we did in the addition. Multiply with the numerator, then subtract the number. So now, 5 into 5. 25. And 6 to the 12. So now we have to subtract and write the final answer. The final answer, 25 minus 12. 30 by 10. Next, we are going to solve the problem on multiplication. See, multiplication with the denominator, don't see the denominator. One in addition and subtraction, you have to check whether the denominator is same or different. In the multiplication, just we are going to multiply the numerator with numerator and denominator with denominator. Okay. If possible to simplify the sum, you can simplify. So now, listen here. 9 fours are 36. Yeah. Plus 9 into minus 4. So it is minus 36 by 7 to the 40. Whether this number is able to simplify? Yes, we can simplify the number by 2. So minus 18 by 7. 18 into 2, 36 and 7 to the 40. Okay, next we are going to solve the problem based on division. See, I am writing here. Rational number by rational number. Okay, so already we saw some example in the properties. What we are going to do in the first step was 2 by 5. I am going to change the symbol divide to multiply and I am going to take reciprocal for the second fraction number. Take the reciprocal 5 by 6. Okay, here you see it can be cancelled. Yes, if you want to simplify, you can simplify and do the problem. Otherwise, multiply the number and then simplify. So, if I simplify once 5 and 5, I get cancel. And 1, 2 is 2 and 3 into 2 is 6. So, the final answer is 1 by 3. If you multiply directly and then simplify also, the final answer is 1 by 3. Okay. So, based on this example, I am going to give you assignment on multiplication, division, addition and subtraction to the assignment problem. So in the first session, we have learned about rational number and how we can express a rational number and we have seen two properties of rational number, closure property and commutative property and we saw some basic examples on rational numbers. Here I gave some assignment problem to work out. So note these problems and work out in your notebook. Listen children, I have to put a separate notebook for maths. You have to get two 200 pages until more food or maths. One for your transfer, other one for your homework. Put margin and write whatever the definitions we have learned based on rational number and the properties. Okay, what we have learned. And do your assignment problem in your homework notebook neatly. Okay, and if you want to use rough column ones, use the rough column at the bottom of your notebook. Okay, your classroom and homework notebook presentation should be neat. Maintain separate notebook for your classwork and homework. Okay, okay children, thank you.